Some have called this the morning after pill for sexually transmitted infections, which it kinda is, but not exactly. It's part of a preventive strategy called doxypep, and it uses the antibiotic doxycycline. Recent studies have shown that doxypep can cut the risk of getting syphilis and chlamydia by more than 70%, and gonorrhea by more than 50%, which is good news because there are complications if these STIs go untreated, and cases have been on the rise for a while. The standard approaches, including sexual education, the use of condoms, contact tracing and testing by way of screening individuals who are in high-risk categories has not kept up with the ongoing spread. So how does doxypep work? It's where you take a 200 milligram dose of doxycycline between 24 to 72 hours after having condomless sex when you may have been exposed to an STI. That's known as post-exposure prophylaxis or PEP and how we get doxy Pep. A small but growing number of studies have shown that doxypep is beneficial to two-spirit, gay, bisexual, and queer cisgender men and transgender women. It's for people in this group who may be at an elevated risk of getting an STI. One gay man we spoke with said having doxypep on hand gave him peace of mind. I have yet another tool in the tool belt when it comes to managing my sexual health. But doxypep isn't for everyone. There isn't enough evidence to show that it's beneficial for other groups like cisgender women and transgender men. Health Canada hasn't approved doxypep as a preventive treatment, so it's prescribed off-label. That's when a drug is used to treat conditions than what it was originally approved for. But Canada's public health agency told me it's looking at the research to consider guidelines for it. Over the next couple of years, I'm sure that the number of guideline agencies around the world will be increasingly stepping up and stating their position on this. And that might make it more broadly accessible. Right now, BC is the only province that allows eligible people to access it for free. But there are options in some other provinces to access it through clinics or certain online healthcare providers. It's not just about giving access to the medication, it's about giving access to healthcare resources and education. And that's where I think we have a, a still a long way to go.